All right, guys, we are here with Joe Alves. He is an incredible player. He's known as the king of non-theme, at least to me and many others. And he is sitting down with us. Joe, thanks for being with us. I appreciate it. Hi, hi Ian. Uh, thanks for having me, first of all. Hello, everybody uh, back at home. Yeah. If you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, just tell us about how long you've been playing Hero Clicks, maybe some of your achievements, what you do outside of that, whatever. Just to introduce okay. yourself. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I first got into Clicks um, when it first came out back in the early 2000s. Uh, I wasn't. I was back in Brazil back then, and um, we had a very small scene there. And I played it for a couple of years. It got pretty popular there, but then it, it sort of died out, and so we left the game. We dropped the game. Um, then many years later, in around 2013, 2014, after I came to the back to the states. Um, I sort of had a whim to, to, you know, pursue it, to see what was going on. And it was right back when, I don't know if you remember when they first dropped, um, they had the utility belt. Oh yeah. Equipped to, right. Like the, the no man's the, the, land. Yeah. I love that. No part. man's land. So, so that had just ended. And so I remember looking at that and losing my mind. I'm like, what? You can put <laughs> a bat, you, you can put a utility belt on anybody? Sign me up, <laughs> dude. It, that was a crazy was era. Like, let me, yeah, I was like, let me go look for this. So that was when, when I started looking at like some builds and stuff, and I saw people were doing that Ghost Rider with the Scarlet Witch, the one that had the pendant there thing. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah so that was that when era. I came back to <laughs> great, great era for sure. And then you know, so that's when I when I got back. So War of Light was about to drop. And um, I remember looking at the stores near me. There wasn't anything really, really near me. I have to drive like at least 40 minutes to get to the nearest store to do anything remotely close. So, um, but I pursued it and, uh, you know, and then I got back into it. Um, then the, the, the scene sort of died out again and we had a, like a slow moment. And I had other things in my life that I had to take care of. So I had to drop it for a while. So I dropped it for like several years and then I came back again to it right before the pandemic. So until now I've been playing, you know, ever since. Yeah, absolutely, man. I think uh I think we had actually met up at that tournament right before the pandemic. I think it was in like Indiana. And yeah. You were yeah, playing I remember. A, a really uh, sick yeah. Micron with, Adam with BJ build. and and what I'm sorry, what what was the guy's name? Uh Oh my gosh, Turk? No, not Turk. What's his what's his what's his nickname? Can't remember his name now for some reason. But it was an amazing tournament up there. Super yeah. fun. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. when Punisher sure. War Machine was just running his oh god, he was running every event with 1776, and you had like a, a way to get around 1776's pre errata limitations of two actions with the Micron yes. Adam cross map. I remember seeing that and just being like this is the coolest team I've ever seen. So I absolutely <laughs> love that. So immediately I was yeah. like, I want to play what this guy's playing. Because I think later that night we were in a hotel room and Joe was telling me, yeah, I have a Venom Groot team that can do like 30 free clicks of damage. So <laughs> that was awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, the, I, I, I do have like a, some weird builds once in a while. <laughs> um, I've done – so ever since I've done pretty well with clicks, I think I um, – I think – May, like what really boosted my confidence and my ability was uh, to start playing the line. So the pandemic sort of really helped me out in that sense, because I think I didn't have access to many different players back then. And I, so I was limited into how I could progress with my skills and my abilities. Oh, but true. once we started playing online, I, I got to meet many of the great players that play the game. And I, I participated in my very first like big tournament online. And I did really well in that. Um, and then I have I had one of my buddies was part of Phoenix Nest, and he had um, referred me to to the team a while back. But I think because they have like sort of like a list of people that they you know analyze and stuff, there were people that were ahead of me on, on this list. So it never had worked out before. But then this time, you know, they saw that I did really well at that big event, and then Wes and and BJ and some other people definitely put a good word in for me as well and then so i i got into phoenix nest and i think that's where i really made the biggest jump because then you know in phoenix nest we had a few um you know 
world champs in the team. And I got to practice with these people almost on a daily basis, not every day, obviously, but, you know, twice, sure. three times a week. And I think that really pushed my game forward because that, because we do something really cool with in, in the nest that we tear, a team, we tear each other's teams apart. So we present the team and then people are going to try to find holes in, in, in the team, find mistakes in the team, find things that could be better. And I think that really helped me because, it, you know, nobody. So it's not like that soft team that you, you know, the guy presents their team and then they're like, oh, OK, that's fine. That's that that should do. OK, no, no, they will really <laughs> rip your team <laughs> apart, you know. make you feel make you feel warm and welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. <laughs> So yeah, you, so, I believe, got was it top eight at Worlds last year as well? Yeah, I got second place in teams and and top eight at Worlds. Excellent. Um, I've also been I've also taken the the Florida um, state champs for the last like three or four like the last three or four of them. I think I got them all. Oh wow! Um, and then I've also um, done really well. In some other big events online, I've won, I've won a couple like pretty big ones, um, and I've placed really well in in, in 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 a few other ones. I think I just won one that you guys did the charity one, right? Yeah, that is true. You did he he did win our IPF event, um, yeah. which is really yeah. cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I, well, by I the way, that was an carnage. amazing event, man. Such a cool event, man. Wow, yeah, dude. I really uh, love that. Actually, coming to fruition. You guys will hear more about that soon here. Um, we have two international players coming to Worlds this year, so be on your toes for that. Oh, we'll wow. That is so exciting, cool. man. Edison wow. Lee from Singapore and then uh, Edi- or sorry, Andrea Gattini from Italy. So, Wow. Yeah. That Long is flights dope, for man. them, but hey, they'll be able to make it. <laughs> that is so cool, man. That's that's very, very heartwarming for sure, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get him in the mix of things. Cause I know I'd feel the same way if I was outside the country, I'd just be dying to get to worlds, but more about yeah. you, Joe. So I introduced him as the non theme King, which I think is very fair. What is your typical play style? What are you usually looking to do in a match, Joe? So, um, the first thing for me, whenever I'm building, I'm always thinking about my reach. If you notice the one common denominator that I have in, in most of my squads is I am very flexible in the sense of movement to, be able to go across the map and interact with my opponent's team immediately. So I feel that, you know, when I played the game a a long time ago, that was the hardest thing for me because the game was involving around having long range, pumping up their range and making sure you're fighting from far away. So you're fighting that sort of, you know, I take a shot, you take a shot kind of thing, right? Sure. And I think that once I came back to the game and I realized that you are able to, you know, move one, two, or even your whole squad across, that really was enticing to me. And that's what I tend to do. So I'm an aggro player at heart, but I do like the aggro control type of, of, of teams. Uh, uh, an example of one of my favorite pieces ever is... Mr. Pitzelik, Mr. Pitzelik, or however you pronounce however it. However you say it. Yeah, I know who you're however talking about. However you want to call it, right? <laughs> uh, he's one of my favorite pieces, not because of the damage itself, but because of the controlling aspect of double beating, you know, in, uh, a whole area of, of pieces. And I think that's, if I had to sum up my favorite kind of piece, that's my favorite kind of piece. It's sure. the piece that can go, can and fight, can do a little bit of damage, or sometimes a lot of damage, and can control what your opponent's doing in some way or form, right? Absolutely. So getting the first hit in, dictating the tempo, and yeah, mm-hmm. just min-maxing the reach to its fullest extent. Absolutely, man. Exactly. exactly I mean, exactly. chances are if you've played non-theme and you've looked at builds like on Facebook, you've probably played one of Joe's teams. Maybe you don't realize it, but uh, if you're playing Mad Jim with the Carter Shield, which is very popular right now, Joe is the person who coined that. He is the person who started doing that. It's fantastic. I did it myself this last weekend at States, swapping into pumpkin bombs or the shot gauntlets with him. It's fantastic. Turns him into a 12 attack energy explosion. It's it's great. So Joe knows his aggro. He knows his tech. But speaking of uh, just like tournaments, builds, everything like that, I know in the recent Bradcast event, you were running a another Mad Gym build, which featured, let's see, Venom Magneto, Chip, uh, Carnage Silver Surfer. Were you uh-huh. running the 
Sky Tyrant, correct? Sky Tyrant, yeah. Uh, and then what else was on the force there? I'm blanking here. Um, so uh, Venom and Venom Mags um, is in there as well. Commissioner was there as well. There we go. I think okay. that's, that's about it, yeah. Excellent. And then, so Sky Tyrant, I believe, starts unequipped, correct? Correct. Now, that's a, that's a very smart choice right now for people who are playing the game and want to, you know, go to a competitive event is um, the Masters of Evil, the chases from the, the Avengers 60th now, they're really powerful pieces and they have the, 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 the capability of uh, nerfing people who are equipped. So always now from this point on the way I build because of because they are in the meta I always have one or two characters in my squad that I might not equip them right so now in in, in this instance it's 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 a it's a double whammy for me because they never know what I'm going to do so I face an opponent who saw sky tyrant and immediately said oh necro sword on sky tyrant right so they they immediately go into the kill kingmonger um, and then I don't, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just go, ta -na -na -na. <laughs> <laughs> and I just don't. And then, um, surprise, surprise, here comes an exploit guy who's just about to murder your kill king monger in two hits, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so that's, that's something that I like a lot. Um, so, and so in my squad that I played at Brad, at the Brad's event, um, it, it was the, the rookie and the the sky tire so basically i made sure that my other characters chip started with the green ring so i could swap into you know defensive or offensive uh, possibilities and the same thing for the, the surfer um and uh that's just the beauty of mad gym right i mean just yeah. fantastic the I the, think, the possibilities uh... <laughs> I think right now, even with, you know, everyone losing their mind over Prime Hulk, uh, Caleb had commented in an earlier interview, like, I think Mad Jim is still on top. The amount yeah. of free points that Mad Jim gets your team, especially with all these new free equipments, the ring bearers, uh, the symbiotes, it's just, and then World's Finest, too, being a personal favorite of mine. You just get so much, so much value out of that. Yes. And also free yes, barrier. definitely. <laughs> You just can't. <laughs> yeah. Him. So free barrier, perplex, right? Uh, he gives you the trinity of, of powers, which is, in my opinion, perplex outward prob. So you get the trinity easily there and many times over when you start giving people dark holds, uh, green la yellow lantern rings, and, you know, you start getting more perplexes, more outwits and, and, and emotional modifier, which is just an area effect of, 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 <laughs> yeah. of modifying ranks, which is just phenomenal. So I think because he gives you that flexibility, you know, I think it's just phenomenal. One thing that I haven't done just because now when, when once they shorten the, the sideline, it's become a little harder is one of my personal favorites is just the time platform, right? Because oh, usually sure. because being able to swap into a time platform on one of your big hitters that you don't want him to die immediately, I think that's just fantastic way to do it, right? Yeah. Another another good thing too is just the rings because imagine you know they come like a sky tyrant. One of the most common things you're gonna see people do to a tyrant is hit him for two or one and leave him alone because now they think now he lost his reach, doesn't have the flurry anymore. It's not as good in, anymore. But if you have an indigo ring, for example, if you have the space for it, you play an indigo ring in your sideline. Now that play is just you know that's folly now because. Sure, they come and they, they they tap it. You just heal them back up and go out, right? So, yeah. yeah. I really like that. Uh, going back to the time platform, I had experimented with time platform on Flash myself, you know, just running in, Fantastic. killing something, getting value, and then teleporting back to the starting area when he's damaged. Because I found Fantastic. that a lot of times, I have, I've watched a good amount of Joe's games in the broadcast. I noticed in a lot of your games, Joe, the ones where Flash lives – another turn the one where flash gets to go again i feel like percentage wise what are your odds on like winning if flash gets to go again it has to go I, up I, I think i think the flash is one of those figures that just has to go right mm -hmm. it's too much damage or control for 30 points <laughs> that's it's, the truth of it no, ridiculous <laughs> it's way too much right way too much <laughs> now not even to not even mentioning the you know, the TAs that he brings, the extra things that he, he has incapacitate, 
I've won a lot of games where my opponent had an, like a couple unkillable things. So guess what? My flash never did a damage, but he also always double beated, you know, their main their main dude. And sure, sometimes they'll have a rollout, but they got a roll now, right? So yeah, I think that chances. and that's where I like the passive control. Also, that plays perfectly into the tarot card, the six of swords, which allows you to I think it's the six of swords, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but that allows you to deal damage after incapacity. That's one of my favorite cards ever. Because it allows you to have that passive aggro control, so you're you're doing damage, but you're controlling what you know they could do. And not to mention, not to both, not to mention that um, it also helps with those pesky stop clicks, right? So if you're yep. facing somebody with a pesky stop click, if you get that damage through because it happens after actions resolve, stop clicks won't won't work. So that's another plus to it as well. I do remember quite a few people complaining about that card specifically, mainly because it did go through stop clicks. But I also don't remember a lot of people playing it. I know people were playing the mind control one, but the incapacitate one, I remember being like, that's really cool. <laughs> so Yeah, it's really cool. So if you have like a few people that have incapacitate and you have maybe a Wonder Woman on your team, that's just a must-have card for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And so kind of going back to your team, um, I know recently you've changed up the build a little bit, and now Carnage Surfer is on the build. I've heard from a lot of people that playing one Carnage Sur Silver Surfer isn't necessarily worth it. There's a lot of people who are stuck on two. What made you put Carnage Silver Surfer onto the Mad Gym build, and uh, how does he kind of interact with like reach? I know people have complained also about his minimal reach only being the right. seven move plus half range, so it would be ten total. Mm -hmm. Just your overall uh, okay. thoughts on him and the build. Very nice. So I like that question a lot, by the way. Um, so I don't think you need to. I understand why people want to play two, because it just increases your odds of um, uh, healing them to the top, right? So that's, 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 a, that's a good call. It's not a bad thing. I personally don't like to rely on the same kind of uh, attacker, um multiple times on my squad and my build and the problem is if they have a counter to one now they counter two right so oh, that's the sure. reason why i don't play two I, I i i think one is just fine i do play the carnage the two by two carnage with whenever i play him i like to play the the, the 10 point carnage retaliator so that it helps you know heal him to heal him up um i do think that in my build he becomes more of a secondary type of attacker he is deadly on short maps small maps so if my opponent wants to take me to those i'm okay with that right um but uh the way i've been playing him is uh because the first thing that drew, drew my attention was the the point cost 50 points is amazing for what he does second he starts with a with a, an equipped um an assigned item and i think that for mad jim is the key right so you need two to three people that, you know, have these items on them. And I believe that one of the my favorite things to do is to either give him Empower through the Blue Ring, switch it up to the Blue Ring, or switch it up to, uh, if they have high defenses, switch it up to an um, Emotional Modifier. And I'll just have him, yeah. I'll have the Tyrant carry him along. Now, when they come and they, they have to deal with the Tyrant, he's already there, so he's in the fight, right? So his long, his short reach won't be that much of a factor there. Now, in my squad, one of the other cool things that I like is that because I am so aggressive, I tend to position in a, in a good way where um, I get him where he's going to be relevant and my opponent has to make decisions, right? He has to decide um, if he wants to deal with the tyrant or to deal with the, the surfer. Now, uh, before I was running um, World's Finest in, in that slot, and I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, I could see myself, you know, playing that as well. There's n absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, the Retaliator is kind of like what drew me in a little bit more, sure. um, and and that's pretty much what why I decided to to change to that. But I can s definitely see myself. Um, playing world's finest i mean who doesn't like you know you know five damage twice 
Yeah, <laughs> possibly with the Waldo arms. Maybe you're looking at three times, like oh, three gosh. times. I mean, just beautiful yeah. stuff, right? He beautiful, is absolutely stuff. brutal. And so, brutal, brutal, brutal. Um, with your team, it it seems like it kind of goes for a little bit of everything. It seems like you really use the sideline to kind of counteract things when you need it to to lower defenses, get that extra prop, the extra out wit. Is there anything that you're looking to specifically answer with this team? Or is it just kind of, you know, I'm just perfecting like what I think is the best non theme. Um, do you have anything you're like looking to specifically go after with it, I guess? Oh, yeah. I mean, so basically Mad Jim is the perfect um, Swiss pocket knife here because he gives you the tools to deal with most situations, most of them, right? True. Now, I think you one of the things you must have nowadays is a pulse waiver, and I have that in Sim. Mad Jim now can also achieve that status. I'm going to teach you all a little trick. So a lot of people forget that you can hurt your own characters, right? So one of my favorite things, even as you've mentioned, aforementioned, mentioned, is assigning the the Carter Shield to to Mad Jim. Now one of my favorite plays once you know the fight starts getting thick is um, you know I'll have like Sim, he can uh, pick a super strength at any given moment, or even just Venom Mags. Um, you just have to make sure that Mad Jim ends on top of a, one of these eleva elevated terrains, right? And what you do is you free TK the the object from under him or you pick it up with somebody who has super strength, and now Mad Jim will fall, right? Take a click of damage. And then now he has his pulse wave knockback because he can just swap into oh, the wow. so 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 this is something that you know a lot of people are sleeping on right now. And I do that a lot with a lot of characters now. So for example, one of the things that you could do is you can like uh, just for instance another character that I love is this the new super rare Spidey from the Avenger 60th. Right at 25 points, people don't really tend to play him at 25, and when they do, if when I see them playing him, it's, it feels like a dead character. But when yeah. I'm playing him, uh, he is a charge flurry 11 for three, baby, with super strength. <laughs> <That is laughs> because really, I always really do cool. that little trick that I just told you. So, and and guess what? If you have Mad Jim and him, boom, you get both of them on the on their best clicks, right? Yeah, getting Mad Jim to a pulse wave by ripping out the elevated from under him. And you could do that a couple times in a turn because click three, Mad Jim gets his pulse wave, right? So if you really needed the pulse wave, you could no, do that's that what with I mean. So, so what, what, you, what you end up doing is you end up hurting him enough so that you can do it. Yeah, exactly. that is awesome, man. Really, really cool. And then, yeah, throwing the shot gauntlets or the pumpkin bombs on him and boom, yeah. now he's got the knockback. Absolutely yeah. amazing. So so that, that play right there happened mm -hmm. at States. Oh, really? um, on my first, yeah. So the, the first turn, um, my opponent uh, comes in and he KOs my tyrant. He just brings a uh, uh, prime Spidey in. Uh, I went in, I KO'd a few things. He comes in and he's able to take out my 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 um, my tyrant. Uh, and then I go, I do the play. I hurt my 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 um, my mad gem, and then I pulse wave it with with Sam, and I deal another damage. To Mad Jim, then I barrier my Sim so my 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 Mad Jim doesn't hit him, and I pulse wave like three or four people with knockback, and I mean just devastating, right? That I mean, so incredible. so that's like it. So so the, because I knew now that my because I had the the Necro Sword on my turn, so I knew that dealing with Spidey, I did not want to go through all the rollouts. So pulse wave knockback, pulse wave knockback, just got me right to uh, you know four clicks in, and that's where the money's at because now. You can outwit the Prime Spidey and then kill him. Excellent, man. That is, yeah. Once again, the non-theme king, guys. This <laughs> this guy's worked <laughs> it out. That's incredible. Um, so oh, thanks, with that, man. with that build, uh, what is currently your biggest threat in the meta? Um, I think AOE and overall AOE builds are, are pretty scary. I think Scarlet Witch is scary to anybody because yeah. you know, she gets a, a nice rune that's scary. But I do have, you know, strategy. I've already thought about that. Um, and I'm A-OK okay, okay with spreading out. A lot of people have, you know, they have this um, trauma about spreading their pieces. <laughs> they they all must hug and stay yeah. together. Uh, I don't have that problem at all. So I'm pretty good at, you know, dealing with the witch. Um, and I have a lot of cool plays, you know, to get around, uh, to get around her. I think one of the, you know, I'm a, I'll share one of them. I think knockback is great. 
because she if she positions herself in a certain way you can knock her to the edge of her um of her uh sort of the room uh, marker whatever the room marker yeah. radiant radio radiance thing right and so you put her to the edge and now you could flurry kill her and things like that right sure so um that's something that i enjoy doing uh for instance you go sim just you know from far away just goes force blast uh, first, I'll wit her, whatever, if you need it. Force her, first blast her out, perplex. You know, make sure you get all your pumps uh, up or down first and then drop her defense down. And then a tire with a necrosword and she's dead, right? I mean, yeah. that's it. She's gone. So that's just an example of, like, you know, how you can deal with these kind of problems. But you can't, you know, you can't deny that it is a, a, a problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's very strong. It's, it's a problem. Like, getting rid of powers is, is very very good who would have thought no <laughs> right also i think i think you know aggro uh, other aggressive teams that do like poisons and things like that animals for example it's always terrifying to face sure. um and i think that's you know um that's a big one uh yeah i think that's about it that i can think of so pretty much anything that can cross the the map with multiple pieces and do a lot of free damage because my team is pretty squishy so I think that's that's probably one of the, the weaknesses for sure. Sure. And so the next question was just primes and, you know, which ones are you thinking of playing? I think we know the answer to that, folks. I think we're looking at Mad Jim. And yeah, honestly, I think it's it's almost 100 percent Mad Jim for me. Um, the, my items have shifted. So I have shifted between having four. Uh, four and six. Um, for when I have other swap mechanics when I'm playing with a, a Avengers 60 of chases, for example, I like to leave a couple spot, spots there for, for, you know, having a few options. Um, and then five, when I need specific things, like when I play the build with, um, world's finest, I love the string of cat burglaries with the, with the world's finest. Just a fantastic way to boost everybody's attack and damage up in one turn. Um, so that's one that, like, sometimes when I have a character like that, or if I have a must-have uh, come in from sideline play figure like Scrappy or something like that, then I'll I'll free up a slot. But I've been I've been you know uh, swapping between about seven items. I want to say on my sideline, Blue Ring has become a must for me for empower. I think that's super strong, super powerful. Not Definitely to mention agree just with the, that. The blue ring yeah, is fantastic. Yeah, I think having that extra damage goes a long way, right? I think of currently with Mad Jim, I'd say like the must plays, at least in my opinion right now. Necro Sword is like obviously the blue ring I'm also a huge fan of. Maybe there's some people out there who'll disagree. Let us know. Um, and then the emo mod, I think, is another just absolute staple. It's yeah. just too much value. Too much value, And I've seen sure. some people yeah. arguing against that, but personally, I just think the stat modification, the protection against mind control, if you need it, get through shape change, it just does too much. And don't sleep Don't sleep on just giving Battle Fury on a close, enclosed space to shooters, right? That oh. also just shuts off, that shuts off a whole turn of attacks. So let's say you're in a, in a little closed up space, let's just say the Daily Bugle, for example, right? True. And um, they want to take shots at you. Obviously, depending on the position and everything, but depending on where they are, they might not be able to get out of the radius and take the shot because they'll have battle fear. And that shuts off pretty much a turn of attacks from somebody. They have to come and base you. Yeah, I, I love that. <laughs> I think where it starts to get interesting. Um, so I'm a big fan of the shot gauntlets. I think that's another very, very common one with the Mad Gym. The pumpkin bombs mm -hmm. are up there. It's yes. usually the fifth and sixth slot where I think you start to see the variance. I know, you know, Angler with Scarlet Witch is a big one, right? Uh, occasionally, so here's, like so here's my question: Why not Angler with Tyrant? I mean, with um, with a uh, Surfer, Carnage Surfer, because uh, see, oh, that's sure. something that people are not thinking about, right? So yeah. you, you mentioned one of his weaknesses mm -hmm. that could just solve that problem right there, right? No kidding. Yeah, an extra six movement. It's crazy. It's it's good. Who would have thought? <laughs> oh my <Love> lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Angler he is definitely to one us. to consider. But what do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> panic, oh. panic, 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 <laughs> panic. <laughs> well, 
Jill, uh, for anybody considering playing this build or similar builds, you know, obviously it seems like the the point of change in your team is the Carnage Surfer. You know, like you're saying, maybe you're switching to the world's finest. Uh, maybe there's a few other differences there, but it seems like that's the main point of point change. Do you have any tips for players who are considering playing something similar? Yeah, uh, my first tip is understanding maps. Um, it, a huge part of the success of a team is understanding when you need to go to a short map, when you need to go to a small map. Um, and only practice is going to tell you which maps those are that you enjoy and that you can defend yourself better. Um, my, my biggest tip in that sense is to always have a combination of open, closed, small and large maps. And I think that's uh, been a huge part of my success with the team is understanding how my opponent is going to attack me and then um, being okay with it and just taking me to the best place where I have the best chance versus him. The fact that my team can get two very strong attackers across a large map does not deter me from picking a large map, right? And I think that's that's where the strength, like one of the things I'll tell people is just make sure you pick your maps right and, and practice uh, that versus your opponent. Um, I'll tell you in, at States, people were not picking the, the best ideal maps. I think part of the reason why I was doing so well there was because they, you know, sometimes they would win and sometimes they needed to maybe choose a better map to defend themselves and not go first, but they just wanted to go first. So I chose the best map. And mm. I think that is, so if you had to ask me, what is the best choice going first or, or picking map? I would say it depends on each scenario, right? And I think knowing that is the big key now right, to, to doing well. Yeah. So that's my first tip. Man. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, you know, practice makes perfect. And yeah, map selection is massive, especially when you're playing a team where a lot of the pieces can die in just one, maybe two attacks. So being able to defend yourself properly, if you're thinking about playing teams like this, definitely do some studying on the maps. And Joe, do you have any final thoughts, any changes you're considering on your build anything you want to throw out shout out whatever you want to do yeah for sure for sure so the the a couple things that i that i've been like thinking about is frogman is fantastic love him yes love frogman just a lot of free shenanigans protects you from knockback which is another big deal right he doesn't let your friendlies jason friendlies be get knocked back so i think that's a big deal as well um it helps versus a lot of teams i'll tell you that um, it breaks formations. It's great against Masters of Evil. So they need to be adjacent to each other for their defensive shenanigans to work. Frogman just says, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> when you play Let's Frogman? Let spread out, right? <laughs> do, you, uh, do you equip the shot gauntlets to Frogman? Is that something oh, yeah. you ever consider? Yeah, because yeah. why, not, why not back one person, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's strength in numbers, right? <laughs> Hit them all just say, let's move out people <laughs> <laughs> yeah so frogman is something that i've been thinking about um a lot and and he is definitely in my top contenders for me to be playing uh another piece that i think does not get enough love does not get played enough is uh plastic man at 20 points because uh, this is a, man. Al, this is the ult this is all an ultimate type of control piece because like I remember facing Jalen, my teammate in one of the broadcast events and I was running plastic man and he had like double tyrants, nasty team. So basically on my first alpha, I killed one of the tyrants, right? Made sure to kill Venom Magneto so that he didn't have any more TKs. I think he was playing like an apocalypse Genesis double tyrant, nasty kind of stuff. Right. True. And then uh, basically I parked, a plastic man next to his remaining tyrant and then i just turned into the thing that when you move next to it the item that when you move next to it you have to stop and i went under the tyrant and now he's locked for the rest of the game unless oh man somebody can come pick him up <laughs> <laughs> this man needs a ride so let's just say let's just say he didn't he didn't enjoy that very much <laughs> I think a lot of people have turned away from Plastic Man, though, just due to Molecule Man being able to just remove him from the game if he's an object, you know? 
Yeah, so that is a problem, uh, definitely. <laughs> Molecule Man is not that popular anymore. And True. if he's there, you just don't turn into the plastic thing, right? That's fine. Yeah. Uh, kill him first, and then you have it, right? I mean, so there's definitely... There's ways to answer you know, it, yeah. But I'm just saying in general, I think people have... I don't know, Plastic Man, I feel like he's never really gotten like the proper respect. Like We always knew he was going to be great because he had all these object options, even before he, it, like all of them had come out. And still, I... I think the only person I've really heard of like maximizing the uh, Plastic Man was like Scott Crampton on his Scarab build where he had like the stop mm-hmm. signs and the Plastic Man. He's playing on like Danny the Street and it just makes is it, it, is, it the, is it the Lord of the Rings build? You shall not pass. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very fair question. You shall not pass and you'll also get force blasted and mind controlled from across the bridge here. <laughs> Yeah, super fair game, right? Let's like, just play uh, a fair game of here. Like, <laughs> very interactive and fun. <laughs> it's like you can't move. You can't. You know, I can attack you across the map. Yay! Let's <laughs> let's have some fun. <laughs> so, Frogman and Plastic Man. Any other characters that people are sleeping on, Joe? Um. So there are a few that I like very much. Um. That don't see enough. Sees quite a bit, but not enough. I think Cosmo is one of my favorites. Oh, um. True. For obvious reasons. Um, there, uh, I, I think Cosmo on defense, it's probably even better than on offense because people, people are going to be like, oh my gosh, now my favorite figure can't do this that I wanted to do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and Shutting I think that's, that's brutal. Massive. Yeah. Yeah. It's massive for sure. Awesome. So yeah, I like Cosmo. Um, and, uh, I think that's that. I think one of my favorite new figures in less uh, competitive gaming has been Ms. Marvel at 50 points, the new one. Um, I think she's fantastic. I think she she reminds me a little bit of Micron and Adam. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I and I like that a lot and the ability to get, you know, to go on the theme and get perplexer probs just icing on the cake. She has Empower, which is great for that kind of team as well. So she's something that I'm definitely dabbling with. I'm not sure if right now is the time for her um, because I think every squad now has a Necro Sword pretty much. And and I think because of that, her main form of defense isn't that great, right? So maybe maybe once rotation happens, yeah. With her being able to pick a keyword, being able to equip a ring to her, and then having her be able to free drop the constructs is very interesting. So Very fun, man. Very fun. Yeah. I mean, maybe there will be a time where that is a, a figure that we're looking at. Let's closer. just put it this way, Ian. I might go there. <laughs> you might go there. All right. You heard it here, yeah. guys. He might pioneer the Miss Marvel Super Rare. We'll have to see. But, Joe, you want to do any shout-outs? Let the people know. Whatever. Yeah, I want to say I want to say hello to the community and and say that you know you guys are awesome. Whenever we do in person gaming, it's amazing. So keep on with that. That's fin- that's fantastic. I want to shout out to my teammates, of course. You know they're always helping me. You know perfect my build either by beating me or or just you know <laughs> just dogging my my build down. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and um obviously I want to say thank you to you guys, you know, the, the all the content creators out there that, you know, are always getting more information to everybody about the game. I think this is, you know, it's definitely something that the game needed. So I want to say thank you to you and to everybody else who does the same thing. So that's amazing. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us guys. Thanks for watching and we'll be back next week with another episode. This has been Ian and Joe.